Praise be to the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. I come to you with a message from him. The Father, Yahweh, who we serve through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. I have made a video um, about, it was titled, What Could Be Happening in 2014-2015 with the Tried Blood Moons, you know. <clears throat> and in this, there was this man that wrote below on it, which I, I deleted it, that, because I talked in it about Hitler and what he did and he was sure to let me know that Hitler did not kill the Jews. He did not exterminate them, but he was trying to expel them from Europe. Now that is a lie straight from Satan. He wanted to kill. He wanted to, to do away with all Jews. As so many times, so many nations have done. So as I was pondering this and thinking about this, the Father began to speak to me in the Rukdesh. And he says, Does not the Gentiles know that Israel is my chosen people. Do they not realize I called Abraham out of Babylon and I called him to go out into the wilderness and roam that I promised him land that at that time belonged to the Canaanites and others that was very deep in sin and abortery and I told him I promised him this land and as Abraham come out, and as he had a child by an, an Egyptian maiden, because, you know, him and Sarah was of great age. And Sarah, at her age, that was probably no longer fruitful. At 90 years old, usually women quit producing the egg that comes from the ovary down the flip, fallopian tube into the womb. And so when she heard this, she laughed. She's thinking, <laughs> no, I'm, you know, I'm too old for that. I, I, I no longer have my monthlies. I no longer... I'm no longer to be able to get pregnant. So in her doubt, she gave him Hagar, who bore him Isaac. But God told him very plainly, No. The seed I have chosen will come from you and Sarah. Not you and an Egyptian, Hagar, but you and Sarah. And there was always a lot of discussion between Abraham and God. 
But even at 90 years old, Sarah become pregnant and had a son whom they called Isaac. The chosen one. The chosen child that would carry on the seed of Abraham. And the promise that he gave Abraham, he gave to Isaac. And Isaac had 12 sons who become the 12 tribes of Israel. You know, people get confused because they seem to think that the Jews is all of the nation of Israel. No. We that are Jewish is from one tribe. There are 11 other tribes out there besides us, okay? Go to Genesis. You can read about all of them and the promise that was given to all of them. But Jacob But Israel had Jacob, and Jacob had the twelve sons, and Judah become the promised line that the Messiah would come through. That's how come they were there during the time of the temple of Herod. Plus there was other tribes there, but they were the main ones. For it was a little Jewish girl that had a baby that would be called, in English, Jesus. In Hebrew, Yeshua. And there are some that think, my people and all of Israel has been done away with. But let me assure you, he's not forgotten us, nor has he turned his back upon us. You see, Israel is the apple of his eye, his chosen people. Now, you may ridicule us, you may put us down the road, you may mock us. You may laugh at us, but be very, very careful what grounds you walk on. Because long ago, when he brought us out of the land of Egypt at Mount Sinai, he told Moses that they that blessed them shall be blessed. They that curse them shall be cursed. And let me assure you, that still applies today. Yes, it is still applies today. The same God that promised it back then still holds firm to that same promise today. Why do you think that Israel had to come back to the promised land? For it is our land, our land, given to us by God himself. The things that would happen in the last days could not happen without us coming home. Now, I know I'm not over there in Israel. And I was born over here in America. But you may make fun of the ones that's over there. But they are the chosen generation to be back into Israel at this day, this time, for the fulfillment of the last days and the soon coming Messiah. They had to be there. For the Messiah would turn. 
to Jerusalem, to his people, to his own. So now let's, let me read to you out of Romans. This man that who is so bitter, so angry, and that tries to say, Oh, Hitler didn't do that. Yes, he did. All I can say to him, So, some of my relatives that died in those concentration camps over there didn't die? How sad your ignorance, ignorance is. Sometimes I go, you know, being one of the chosen is sometimes a hard journey because he expects, no, he don't just expect, he demands the most from us. For we were chosen from the line and seed of Abraham. A promise was given to Abraham. A promise was given to Isaac. A promise was given to Jacob. A promise that God gave and a covenant given that he would never, ever, ever break. It is as sound and it is as sure today as it was made back then. So let's go to Romans, the 11th chapter. Paul speaking. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. I am the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Foreknew? He, he knew us. When we were still the seed in Abraham's belly. What? He not what the scripture saith of Elijah how he made intercessions to God against Israel, saying, Lord, thou have killed the prophets and dug down thine altars, and I ha and I I am left alone, and thou seek they seek my life. But what saith the God? Answer, but what saith the answer of God unto him? So you see, Elijah was at the time when Jezebel had come in and married the king of Israel, and they were killing the prophets. Israel had pretty well turned theirself to Balaam and began to worship him, burning their children in the arms of the belly of the bull doing a terrible thing that was an abomination to God himself. But what? What did God say to him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed their knee to the image of Baal. Let me assure you, God has reserved to himself a mighty group of men and women nowadays who have not bowed our knee to the image of Balaam or this world, of this sinful world that so many of you Gentiles are beginning to bow your knee to. Look at America. Laws were passed of abortion, killing babies. Same thing as laying those babies in the arms of that bull, being burned. Giving permission legally 
for homosexuals to marry, which is another abomination to God. And you Gentiles follow along right with it. And some of my people do too. Shame on you. You have walked back into the world of the Gentiles, worshiping the things that they worship, falling away. But those groups of people will know the fury of God in due season and time. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed their knees to the image of Balaam. Do you not remember what it says over in Revelation? There's going to be 144,000 Israel from each tribe. All 12 tribes, 12 out of each tribe. That's going to be sealed of God. A mighty force that will stand for God. Israelites standing for God. That's sealed by Him. That's reserved to Him. God Himself. To stand in these last days for him. Even so, then, as this present time, also there is a raiment according to the elect of grace. They are a raiment of us Israelites. that has been chosen according to the elect of grace. Whose grace? God's grace. Through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. We no more have to take bulls, goats, and calves, and doves, and oxen, whatever to a temple to be sacrificed for our sins for the one that was already sacrificed for our sins around 2,000 years ago have cleansed us by his blood so it's not by works it's by otherwise grace is no more grace. If it was by words, if, if we had to go do this, if we had to stick kill animals and sprinkle them on the altar and pour the blood at the base of the altar, if we had to stick do that, then it would be by works, not by grace. But we no longer do that. The temple is no longer there. Therefore, we no longer, no longer sacrifice animals. But it's, it's grace. But is by, but if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, works is no more works. So we no longer have to work to find His goodness and His grace and His forgiveness. It is by the grace of Yeshua HaMashiach and His blood covering us. What then? Israel hath not attained that which he seeketh for? But the elect hath obtained it, and the rest were blind. There was an elect then, and there's an elect now. And the elect have attained the grace. When I was seven years old, I heard the voice of God saying, Barbara, are you awake? I didn't answer at first. Again he called, Barbara, are you awake? Still, I didn't, I didn't answer. I kind of pulled the sheets over my head because I was afraid. Again, with a little stronger voice, Barbara, are you awake? 
Of course, at a seven-year-old child, I got scared, and I, and I called for Daddy to come and get me, and he said, No, you come in here. So I was afraid, and I was afraid to open my eyes. So I got up, and I was feeling my way to the door, and I felt a hand take my hand and guide me through the dining room, around the wooden stove, and into my mom and daddy's room. And usually when I was afraid, daddy would put me in bed between him and mama, you know, so I could be comforted. But that night he didn't. He put a pallet on the floor, and he had me to lie on the floor. And I remember as a child, I was laying there with my arms across my chest, and my eyes closed. But I seen a vision of someone coming through the wall and walking around to my left-hand side. And I could feel a garment going across my elbow. And I managed to look up and I seen a beautiful white robe. The first one I looked over, I seen feet with golden sandals and a robe that was touching and I followed the robe up and I seen a face that shined so bright it was a glorious light and his hair was white as wool and his eyes were like flaming fires dancing in them and he introduced himself to me as Jesus Christ because see my daddy was a preacher I knew who the name of Jesus Christ was and I'm looking up at him in amazement and he says Barbara I knew you before the foundation of this earth were laid I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I have called you to be my witness in these last days. For years I didn't quite understand what he was talking about. But he called me, he said, I'm calling you to be my witness and prophet for these last days. I've never considered myself important. I just consider myself a child of God and one that Yeshua has chosen to speak of His Gospel. That He is the Son of God. And that he is coming back to earth again. There is an elect that has the blood of Israel running through us. That are called out. An elect. What then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for but the elect hath obtained it, and the rest were blind. That happened in a time when Yeshua walked the earth. There was an elect that their eyes was wide open, and the rest was blind. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, the ones that are blind. The ones that are still blind, and they have not seen, their eyes were blinded. Let me go on. Spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, ears that they should not hear, until unto this day. It's still going on, people. We have the elect that our eyes have been opened. I'm not the only one. Oh, no. There are many out there. Believe me. They are a lot more than what you can realize. And David saith, Let their tablet be made sure, and a trap, and a stumbling block, 
and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see and bow down their back away. Now why would God blind his chosen people's eyes where they would not see? Why would he deafen their ears so they would not hear? And why would they still be that way, the most that way, all but the elect? For you, the Gentiles, for it is your time for now. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid! Mm -mm. But rather that their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. They fell so you, the Gentiles, can come into the provision of God. For once he knew you not but through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, He has come to know you. And doing this, it is to provoke all of Israel to come and be jealous. Now if they fall, of uh, them be the riches of the world, and the demonish of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Ooh. Ooh. If most of Israel so far has fallen for the richness of the Gentiles, you who is not part of Israel, hmm, how much more their fullness, because our nation's time is coming back. For I speak to you Gentiles, insomuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Paul was called, who was an Israelite out of the tribe of Benjamin, to be an apostle to the Gentiles. If by any means I have provoked to emulate them which are my flesh and might save some of them, I call unto my people, come out of your blindness and your darkness and be saved by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach that truly come to you first. And you rejected them for what? God blinded your eyes and deafened your ears so that this thing could happen and the birthing of the Gentiles could come forth unto him through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. Just saying. For if the casting away of them be the reconciliation of the world. What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branch. So if we, the first fruit, of God be holy so the whole lump is holy see we that are part of Israel that has been called out that has been reconciled to God through the Messiah that has been set aside and called the elect of Israel, hmm, then we that are the first fruit be holy and part of the body of Israel 
then that lump is to be holy, also holy. And if we that are embedded in the root of Yeshua HaMashiach be holy, so are the branches holy. And if some of the branches be broken off, God himself. In John it says, Jesus said, Yeshua said, I am the vine and the father is the husbandry. And he prunes. He prunes what he wants to prune. So during this pruning, he cut off some of the branches and then, being a wild olive tree, you Gentiles that were of the wild olive tree out there were grafted in amongst them, us. And with them, partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. So, you have been grafted in so that you can be partakers with us, the natural born. Mm, 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 mm. And the fatness of the olive tree. But let me remind you, when you say terrible things, disgusting things about us, what does it say? Boast not against the branch, but if thou boastest, thou bearest not, boast, bearest not the root, but the root thee. You, you who are grafted in, do not hold the root up. You're just grafted in. You're a branch that's grafted in from a wild olive tree into a natural olive tree. For the root is Yeshua HaMashiach. That will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, some were broken off so that you might be breathed in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Some of the tribes were broken off. Not for just you, but because of their unbelief. For centuries... We, a stiff-necked people that have rebelled so many times, have been punished and led off to captivity so many times, during this time were broken off because, what? Of unbelief. Not that you're so righteous. Not that you're so perfect for you to be grafted in, but it was because of their unbelief. Be not high-minded, but fear. This is talking about you Gentiles that are grafted in. Understand this. Be not high-minded, mm -mm, but fear. For if God spare not the natural branches, you know, he didn't spare the natural branches and, he, and we're the apple of his eye, and he didn't spare his own son, hmm, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Oh, you high-minded ones that think that you have taken the place of Israel, hmm, and that Israel is no more, be afraid. Be very, very afraid. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the sovereignty of God on them which fail, 
severity, but towards thee, goodness, if thy contain in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. In other words, it's saying if you don't contain in his goodness and righteousness, you can be cut off too. And what is happening with you? You're falling back into the world and you're casting Yeshua aside as you go along your merry way and you're saying what is good is bad and what is bad is good. You yourselves are beginning to turn your back on the righteousness of God. And know you not that you can and will one day be cut off? And there also, if thy bid not still in unbelief shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Let me assure you, they are going to be grafted back in. They're, the work has already begun. That's why they're back over in the promised land. The work of grafting them back in is already at work. My daddy worked on a ranch, a walnut ranch. And how you get English walnuts here in America, you take a Native American walnut tree, you cut off the branches, and you graft in the English walnut. Have you ever seen a branch grafted in? You cut off a limb, you split it, you put on this dope or sto stuff that stimulates growth, you put the other branch in there, you tie it on, and you wrap it. That's what's called grafting on. Then that limb begins to grow into the tree and it will produce that nut that it was supposed to. Instead of... I mean, you do not understand what's going on here over there right now. For if that will cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and would graft contrary to the nature into a good olive tree how much more shall those which by the natural branch be grafted into their own olive tree that's what's happening I am grafted back in I am a Jew I have been grafted back in. For I would not, brother, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own consent. That blindness, in part, is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. There, was a, there is a set time and a set limit for the Gentiles to all come in. But what's going to happen? And so all Israel, all Israel, shall be saved as it is written. Therefore shall come out of Zion the deliverer, shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Go to Isaiah and read chapter 59 you'll learn much okay but he's saying okay so there's going to become a time when all Israel's going to be saved you will as a Gentile will have served your purpose in time and when it's over all of Israel shall be grafted back in, and they shall be saved. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. What does he say, Jacob? Because he is the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. 
meaning all Israel shall be saved. For this is my covenant unto them, which I shall take away their sins. He's going to take away all of our sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for what? Your sake, the Gentiles' sake. But as touching the elect, and I happen to be one of them, called and chosen. I didn't choose him. No more than my generations back to Abraham. God chose him. They are beloved for their father's sake. I happen to be one of them that is beloved for their father's sake. Everyone from all the tribes of Israel, they are beloved for the father's sake. For a promise he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Do you understand what it says? The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He made a promise to my forefather so many centuries ago and he will not go back on it he will not repent of it for the same calling he called in is still called today for as ye in time's path have not believed God yet have not obtained the mercy through their belief unbelief Yet have now, okay, let's read it right. For as ye in times past have not believed God, at one time you Gentiles did not believe God. You didn't. You went your way. You were not part of the chosen. Yet have now obtained mercy through what? Their unbelief. I'm talking about the other group. Not the elects that he has called out from Israel. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. Instead of criticizing the Jews, instead of belittling them and the nation of Israel, what? You're supposed to have mercy upon us and love us and pray for us and hold us up asking for the peace of the Messiah upon us. For God hath concluded them in them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. If at any time when Yeshua was here, at if any time that the eyes of, of the scribes and Pharisees had been open, you'd have never obtained mercy. Because if we had accepted Yeshua back then, he would have gladly accepted us. And that mercy that God happened to want to put on you would not have been obtained. But by God deafening their ears and blinding their eyes where they would not see the truth. In doing that, he showed you mercy through the blood of Yeshua. All the depth of the right, rich, both of the wise and the knowledge of God, hath unscribable are his judgment. And his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? I ask you right now. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? You that say that Hitler didn't do what he did, but he did do. You that criticize the Jews and mock us. 
you you think you know the mind of the Lord when he called us the apple of his eye God forbid or who had been his consult are you cons con are you giving God advice on how he should run his business are you telling him counseling him God forbid or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again for of him and through him to him are all things to whom be glory forever Israel was sacrificed so that you could come into the knowledge of righteousness in Yeshua HaMashiach. Aid you. Aid you. From my line. Let me read you in Ephesians chapter 2 beginning with verse 11 the household of God wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised by that which is called circumcised in the flesh by hand that at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel for we are the nation of God the chosen ones and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope no hope without God in the world because before Yeshua came you were out there without any hope not a part of Israel not a part of the chosen having no hope without God in the world but now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ through the blindness and the deafness of Israel you were able able to come in out of the world because you were afar off now you can come nigh by the blood of my Messiah a Jew that we in English call Jesus Christ in Hebrew, Yeshua. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Yeshua broke that wall down between us and you Gentiles through his death on the cross. Through him, this middle wall is broken down. This partition is broken down between us. Having abolished in his flesh the enemy, even the law commandeth contained in ordinance for to make in himself of twain one new man. So making peace and that he might reconcile both both not just one not just you Gentiles but both unto God in one body one body by the cross having slain the enemy thereby so if you're out there calling us names and criticizing us and putting us down and belittling us 
You're not part of the body. You may think you are. But if you curse us, you will be cursed. And come and preach peace to you which were afar off, you Gentiles, and to them that was nigh, Israel. For through him we both have access by one spirit, the Ruh Kadesh, unto the Father. For there is only one God, one spirit, and one Son, one Savior, one Messiah. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but what? Fellow citizens with the saints, Israel, and of the household of God, Judah. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone that puts us all together. The Gentiles here, Israel here, coming together and forming one body. In whom all buildings fit firm together, groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you also are built together for what? A habitation of God through the Spirit. So people, when you curse us, that gentleman that did that cursed us. He cursed himself. By cursing yourself, Turning upon us, the Israel, the first fruit, the firstborn of God, who was called from the seed of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob. You that turn against us and curse us and want to do away with us and destroy us, as Hitler tried and failed. Only he opened the door for us to go back home. Beware, beware of how you speak. For God the Father hears every word, and he recollects it, and he writes it in a book of remembrance. And one day, you will be judged. And I say this in much love, for you have a chance to still repent. You need to repent and ask for forgiveness and start blessing Israel instead of cursing her so that our blessings can come upon you too. Be blessed in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and Amen.